Here are some other things that are holy. If you say this fast three times, what do you get? Holy days, holy days becomes what? Holidays. This is what we call holidays. The Y changes to an I. By the way, is Y changing to an I is no big deal linguistically. And it's our holidays, holy days, okay? And what's a holy day? It's the Sabbath. The Sabbath, as we said, they celebrate on Sat uh, Friday night, begins the Sabbath. They have family dinner, and then they celebrate the Sabbath with no work. And then Saturday night, the Sabbath ends. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, so the Sabbath, big important point. Point, the feasts. The feasts. The Jews will have a series of feasts. And by the way, will the feasts be listed in Leviticus? Are the feasts going to be important for the priests? Do the priests have to officiate at the, at the feasts? Yeah, so the, the book of Leviticus is going to go through the feasts in detail because, you know, the priests and Levites, that's uh, what the priests officiate at, these feasts. Uh, and that'll be Leviticus chapter 23. So these are holy days. So are there special times? Are there holy times? Do some of you have special times that you meet with God? And, and so I'm saying this, the time, and then we looked at space. So that time and space are experienced in the presence of God. And that time and that space become holy. Okay, When a person experiences in that time that place, these kind of holy things. Now, what happens when holy things are violated? What happens when holy things are violated? Do you remember these two guys? Nadab and Abihu. Nadab and Abihu. Whose kids were these? Yeah, these are Aaron's two sons. Did they offer up an unauthorized, in Leviticus chapter 10, they offer an unauthorized fire before the Lord. They offer an unauthorized fire from the Lord. What happens to them? They get consumed and they're destroyed. They're dead, okay? So these two guys, Aaron's kids, offer an unauthorized fire. They are smitten dead in the presence of the Lord. They violate the holiness of God and the holiness of God consumes them. By the way, do you think that affected Aaron very much? Okay, when Aaron goes in there, do you think Aaron went trouncing in there and say, hey, well, I'm here now, I'm the high priest, man, so hey, those kids, they didn't know what they were doing, so I'm here now. Do you think Aaron went in like that? Or would Aaron go, whoa, okay, do you, do you see the change of attitude that would have happened? Okay, these were Aaron's kids, too. It's kind of interesting, too. In our culture, do we always get a second chance? In our culture, do we always get a second chance and always the consequences never really come to bear on us because somebody will bail us out and stuff like that? Did the consequences fall on these kids? No second chance. Okay, I think you need to think about that. Consequences happen and stuff, and, and you just, it's, it's not always, uh, how should I say, God doesn't always move with this grace and compassion and long-suffering that, that means there's no consequences to anything. Hit pretty strong here with Nadab and Abayu, Leviticus chapter 10. Here's another one. It's also difficult. This one was difficult for David, King David. What was David doing here? This guy's name is Uzzah. David, the Ark of God, the Ark of God had been out with the Philistines. And the Ark had been going from place to place with the Philistines. The Philistines, finally, they're getting killed, so they said, we've got to give this Ark back to the Jews. So the Ark comes back into the Jewish territory. David then makes Jerusalem his capital. David makes Jerusalem his capital, and he wants to bring the Ark of God up to his political capital. So then Jerusalem would be the religious capital as well as the political capital. And so David captured Jerusalem. It was owned by the Jebusites before. David was the one who captured Jerusalem, and that's why it's called the city of whom? The city of David, because David is the one who captured Jerusalem. So David now is trying to bring the Ark up to Jerusalem. They put it on a cart. The cart's going up. It's kind of like New England. There's rocks everywhere. And so what happens is the, the cart hits a rock or whatever, and the ark is going to fly off this thing. What's Uzzah do? Uzzah puts out his hands to stabilize the ark. He touches the ark. What's the, what's the problem when you touch the ark? Boom. He's dead. Okay? He touches the ark. He's dead. Okay? Um, you guys all know it from Indiana Jones. You open up the ark, and what happens? Everybody's face melts down. <laughs> Anyways, so, but, okay, so the ark. By the way, David, did that scare David? Did that scare David? 
what did David say? Okay, David's bringing the ark up to Jerusalem, wanting to bring it up. All of a sudden, Uzzah, and he calls it Peretz Uzzah, the breaking forth on Uzzah. And David says, whoa, whoa, keep the ark there. Keep the ark there. And David then didn't bring the ark up at that time. And then several years later, or whatever later time, I forget exactly how long it was, David goes down. Next time he brings it up, do they bring it up on the priest's shoulders, carrying it up, offering sacrifices every seven steps all the way up to Jerusalem? Okay. And then David dancing before the Lord with all his might. We'll get into that later. But this bringing of the ark of the Lord to this Uzzah violated the holiness of God. He dies. Here's one that you're probably not aware of. This guy is King Uzziah. King Uzziah from Second Chronicles 26. Uzziah was thinking he was big stuff. And so Uzziah is the king. And he's going to show everybody he's the big king. So he says, hey, I'm going to go offer incense by myself. I don't need a priest. I can go do it myself. So Uzzah's going in there, he says, I'm going to, or Uzziah's going in there, he says, I'm going to offer up the incense myself. I don't need these priests. The priests go, Uzziah, don't do it. Don't do it, Uzziah. Don't do it. Back off, Uzziah. I said, I'm the king. I'm going in there. He goes in there and goes to do the incense thing, and what happens to his hand? All of a sudden, zoom, the guy gets leprosy, and he's covered with leprosy. What, by the way, when you got leprosy, are you clean or unclean? unclean. And so all of a sudden, then the priests just rush him out of there. And by the way, Uzziah then has a leprosy for the rest of his life and lives as a leper the rest of his life for violating, again, that holy space, violating that holy space and that holy place with God. So these are three examples of people violating that holiness and kind of the response that you get there. Now,